What's up, Murray State? My name is Addison Price. I'm a sports writer, and my fantasy team is 4-0 this week. Hi, my name is Greg Waddell. I am a sports editor for the Murray State News, and no, no one still cares about Addison's fantasy football team. Fantasy football rocks. I'm Dylan Stinson. I'm a football correspondent for Murray State News, and I don't care about Addison's football team either. Fantasy football rocks. <laughs> All right, so our first topic um, is Murray football. Uh, we're going to get a little uh, recap of last week's game from Dylan. Well, the Rangers came up short again. They lost 30, I mean, 40 to 34, but um, some big things happened in the game. Freshman Arthur Brackett won OBC Newcomer of the Week by catching 13 passes for 96 yards. Also, Marcus Harris called eight passes for 99 yards and uh, set the new Murray State record for most receptions, most career receptions. He has 154 receptions now. And uh, also, sophomore Casey Brockman stepped in and threw for 197 yards on 23 completions and also rushed for 65 yards and two scores. So, although Murray lost again, they're still improving more and more every week. I mean, they were playing the number three team in the country in Jacksonville State, and they're just constantly improving, so things are looking up. I have one thing to say about this. Um, I mean, I really have nothing negative to say about the Murray State football team. Uh, we're getting better every week. Uh, I mean, awesome. Like, I, like this is the first time I've been excited to watch Murray State football in a while. Um, Hatcher's getting his guys ready to play, and uh, every week is just another step forward in progress. Um, I mean, that's all you can ask of them, really. I mean, the wins are going to come if we keep playing the way they, you know, the way we are. Um, we're taking the good teams, and every week, um, you know, we're cutting down our mistakes, and the margin of, uh, of victory is getting smaller and smaller. So, um, if not this year, next year's going to be a special season for Murray State football. This week, um, Murray State plays Missouri State University in their homecoming game. And uh, Missouri State does have a few studs. They got Cody Kirby, who's their quarterback, and he's uh, thrown six touchdowns. He's right under 1,000 yards passing. So he's got a good army, knows what he's doing back there, but also he's really dangerous on the run, too. He's, he has 145 rushing yards and five rushing touchdowns. He leads their team in rushing touchdowns, which is big because uh, Murray struggles with the rush, but. Hopefully, we'll put a stop to him. And also, they have Antoine Wilkinson, who's uh, he's a sophomore, and last year as a freshman, he won numerous awards, all kind of uh, football awards for um, whatever conference they're in. And um, he was named defensive MVP of their team last year. And, and this season, he has 25 tackles, and five of those tackles are for loss. So those, those are big challenges that, that the racers are going to have to face, but hopefully they'll come out on top. And moving from Murray State Athletics, we're going to go to national news, and Greg has a story about baseball. Okay. Um, the playoffs kicked off uh, just recently, um, and, you know, the, the football class is one of my favorite times of the year. Um, you know, just around, like, the end of, uh, the end of September, the beginning of October, the playoffs start. Um, so we're just going to, like, we're going to do for you some little breakdown each of, uh, you know, like, who we have, and, like, winning each pennant, and talk a little bit about each team. Uh, so I guess I'll go first. Um, from the AL, I have the double Rays. Oh, it's the Rays now. Yeah. Uh, they're going to advance from that side. Um, the AL is, is a lot more open than the NL is. Um, the NL is pretty much like a one or two team league at this point. Um, so I mean, any number of the teams you know could come out. You know, the Twins or the Rays or the Yankees. But um, to me, the Rays are just going to stand out because um, they're really good at run prevention. Um, they have really good shutdown relievers, um, and the offense is good enough to work uh, counts deep. Um, the bats really only uh, you know are strong like you know a couple bats. Uh, Evan Longoria is one of the few elite players um, in, you know, in their lineup, um, and behind him, you know, Carl Crawford's fast, um, and he, he's, he's also really good. But um, just top to bottom, like their lineup's not as strong as some of the NL teams. Um, so from the East, I'm mean, from the AL. I have uh, I have the Devil Rays behind Evan Longoria. He's batting 294, uh, 22 home runs, and 104 RBIs. Um, that's my team for the AL. Um, as far as the NL goes. Um, I think if the if the Phillies don't make it to the to the fall classic, then it's you know an upset. Um, they have by far the top you know the top lineup in the in, in the NL top to bottom. Uh, they have guys like you know Chase Utley and Jason Worth. Um, these guys are just tearing things up right now. The relievers are a little bit shaky, um, but but they find ways to get outs, and that's important, especially in the fall. Um, you know the season doesn't doesn't matter anymore. Um, now you play five games, and you know that's it. So um, I'm going to give my, my choice to the Phillies. Um, Chase Utley is a stud. Um, the only thing, like, his, his only weakness is he gets hurt a little bit too often. Um, so I think it's going to be an awesome, an, awesome match now, an awesome matchup, and I think the Phillies are going to take it in, uh, in the World Series. What about you, Aston? My picks are the Rays, who Greg 
most brilliantly elaborated on. And my next pick is going to throw a little curveball at everyone because I'm going to pick the Reds to get to the World Series game. Um, I picked the Reds just because I think it's their time. They have a great year. They had a great year. They won a whole lot of games uh, behind uh, the first baseman, Joey Votto, and Scott Rowland, and many other big names. Um, I've been a Reds fan my whole life also, so it's cool to see them in the, uh, in the um, what do they call it, playoffs. So it's cool to see them there, and uh, I just think that they can make it. They just got to beat the Phillies. I think if they beat the Phillies, then they have a shot at winning the World Series. And you're all about the Reds. You have red shirt on, you have the red Philly team, you have the Reds team. I just, I don't, I don't yep. understand why you're going with that, because both, t I mean, the Reds suck. No, they don't. <laughs> no. They, uh, they're, they're not very good. I've seen them play, they won. Well, I picked the Yankees for the American League and the Braves for the National League. And um, I picked the Yankees because the Yankees are the Yankees. And I picked the Braves because the Braves are my favorite team and they have really cool uniforms. The Yankees suck. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Braves too, but um, I, the Braves scraped in, and they're gonna get they're gonna get kicked in the face. Although my Rays are losing five to nothing in the top of the fifth to the Rangers, so I'm gonna come back to bite me too. But you wanna, you wanna go ahead next topic? Yeah, our next topic is very special. Um, we actually are gonna go out to the Stewart Stadium and present the next topic. Welcome to the beautiful practice field at Roy Stewart Stadium. Uh, we are actually uh, doing a couple uh, stories today. Our first story is about Randy Moss getting traded to the Vikings. Greg has a little story about that. So what the deal is, is uh, it was English today. Yeah. They, uh, they agreed on terms to send Randy Moss to back to the Minnesota Vikings uh, for a third round pick in next year's draft, as well as the conditional pick in the, in the year after that. Um, so basically the Patriots right now have four picks um, in each, I mean, uh, four, like, two picks in each of the first four rounds. Uh, so they're going to be pretty stacked. Um, I think it's awesome for Randy Moss. Um, he was getting in fights with everybody in the, in the England organization. Um, he's a great player, but uh, I think he overstayed his welcome in New England. And uh, it's good for him to go back to where he started at. Um, hopefully he can help Brett Favre not throw so many, not, not throw so many interceptions. Um, he needs all the help he can get. Yeah, Brett Favre really needed a big time receiver. They tried to get Vince Jackson early this year, but they, they couldn't get him. The trade fell through. So now they got Randy Moss. We'll see what they can do. Uh, next story is this weekend, uh, Josh Scobie made a 59-yard field goal. And just to see how far away 59 yards is, we're going to see if we can make one. Nope. We cannot make a 59-yard field goal. <laughs> Laces out, Greg! Sorry. Not good. <laughs> Not quite 59 yards. <laughs> After realizing that we could not make a 50 yard field goal, as the football corresponded, I figured the smarter choice would be to move up in yardage. Here we are now to attempt a 10 yard field goal. Yeah! To the house, baby. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Good job! What's up, Murray State? Sign me up, Keenan Cullen. <laughs> uh. Good. And he called it. Murray State. We got we three got new three players. Right here. So what's up? Three new players. All right, back to the studio. Well, thank you for checking in with us again this week. Um, hopefully you were entertained. If not, um, fire him. He's the guy that sucks about this. So uh, check back in <laughs> next Friday, and we will try to keep you more entertained next week. Pick up a newspaper. Thank See you, guys.